All right. So here's the thing. I've seen this guy on TikTok for a while. And it's kind of a doozy. This whole situation is like super bizarre and complicated. Um, and so <laughs> I haven't looked into it a, like, soup, a lot. We're going to do that together. That's the original content. But here's my limited understanding of this guy. Okay. This guy um, is somebody who I believe 17 years ago attempted to shoot up a school um i believe he wasn't successful i could be wrong about that we're gonna look we're gonna obviously look into more of that i'm gonna look at some of what he says as well as what people say that disagree with him of course then he spent 17 years in prison he got out and then he has another incident where apparently while working at a homeless shelter he got attacked with like swords which is crazy uh here's my thing fundamentally speaking when it comes to this guy um, I think that if you're a progressive, you're supposed to value the reform that could come from going to prison. That doesn't mean that what he did isn't horrible and disgusting. And if you could never be comfortable around him or engage with him or want to, you know, look at what he's putting out, I totally get that. And frankly, that's where I lean more than anything else. This person makes me very uncomfortable because of his past. And so from a, um, just from a feelings perspective, he's not somebody I could ever really engage with his content. But I also understand that separating my feelings from that, that's what prison's supposed to be. It's supposed to get people off the streets that are dangerous and it's supposed to help reform them to place them back into society. Whether it does that successfully all the time, <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. But that's the whole point of it. And apparently he goes around and he does different conferences and he talks about the horrific thing that he had done. And, you know, I find it interesting that a lot of people on the internet are like trying to quote unquote expose him where it's like, yeah, talk about it, you know, but at the end of the day, that's kind of what the point's supposed to be. The point of trying to live in a better society is to be super uncomfortable and enacting things that are supposed to be better for all of us. So, you know, maybe he did something much worse but I would imagine 17 years in prison could give a lot of people time to change. Um, so I'm curious. Let's see. Let's see what we we let's see what we got here. So let's kind of start with his first rendition of what happened. A lot of people know me for this surviving a sword attack seven months ago when I worked at a homeless shelter. But a lot of you might not know my full story and why I wanted to work at that homeless shelter helping people and why I'm such a big advocate for mental health. Okay. This is me, at 16 years old, about to be sentenced to 20 years in prison. Because on February 9th, 2004, when I was just 16 years old, I did the unthinkable. I walked into my high school with a shotgun. Jesus. Now, my intentions that day were not what we see too often with these tragedies on the news. I was not there to kill, but to be killed. And I could have stayed at home and ended my own life. And sometimes I still wish I had. But... Okay. I was afraid. I was unable to pull the trigger on myself. And part of me also didn't want to die alone. I, I also didn't want to be forgotten. I wanted people to see me. I wanted them to see my suffering. Because okay. I believed that I was alone in my suffering. I didn't know just how prevalent depression I mean, personally, I don't know. <laughs> this isn't really resonating with me. Part of me feels like there's a... I don't know. I, I, I can be apprehensive about this stuff. I, I wonder if this is true, I guess, is my... my, 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 my question you know is it true that he really felt this way and uh that he was there to just have you know end his own life in some capacity i guess by police officer which is obviously terrible um or did he i don't know or is that a reframing because he's ashamed of himself i guess we they wouldn't know it is <clears throat> and how too often mental illness is so yeah what he's saying isn't wrong there's just something about the cadence of his voice that um puts me off but it also just might be i'm not it, he might just not be somebody i resonate with you know i wanted people to see me and i also knew that i'd be harming people psychologically i knew i'd be spreading the suffering that i felt like i had alone but when i was in that school that's so day, weird i don't know man something is bizarre I, is it just me maybe it's just me but something feels uh, okay. let's keep going i was on. not there to Let kill me take anybody. it all in. When I went into the hallway, 
there was a couple of students. Okay. One was right in front of me, and he ran for his life. I still see him every day. Okay. And I waited until he was gone. And I turned around a corner, and I seen two more students, a good 40 feet down the hall. So I fired off two rounds into the ceiling and scared them away. And I walked around for a while. Okay. Now, I had stepped into one classroom just to see people. So did like nobody I said, die? I was afraid of being alone. I wanted people to see me, to see the pain and the suffering that I was going through. Okay. But what I ended up seeing was their pain, their suffering. I saw the fear and the terror in their eyes. But I left that classroom and I walked back out into the hallway and I was walking down. And after a while, the vice principal who came to investigate the sounds that he heard, not knowing that they were shotgun blasts. He came up behind me and grabbed me and he grabbed at the gun and okay. we started the struggle. And during the struggle, my finger was on the trigger and the gun went off. Okay. And I didn't know that there was a teacher coming up behind us to help the vice principal detain me. I didn't even know I had shot somebody. So he shot a teacher. He was hitting the leg. And uh, I didn't know about did that die? until later on. But yeah, I shot somebody. So wait, so he killed somebody. I didn't know about that until later on. But yeah, I sh I didn't even know I had shot somebody. He was hitting the leg, and uh, I didn't know about that until later on. Wait, did he die or but, not? Did I hear yeah, something wrong? I shot somebody. So did he say that he died? Why do I feel like I heard that? There was a teacher coming up behind Am I just fucking dumb? To help the vice principal detain me. I didn't even know I had shot somebody. Oh, he didn't sound... He like... was hitting the leg. Okay. And uh, I didn't know about that until later on. So he didn't... Did he die? Okay, yeah, I, guess not. I shot somebody. So... Okay. I went to prison. Okay. And spent 17 <laughs> years in there. And I did my best to turn my life around. And I, I don't know why I thought somebody killed somebody. I don't know what went like something <laughs> like teleported into my brain. I don't know why. Sorry. I did my best to work on my mental health. Okay. <clears throat> and I began to speak out when I saw these terrible tragedies happening. Okay. Damn. He looks like he would do this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not appropriate. That's not appropriate. Because I know that... I had to be a part of the change that wasn't coming. And when I came home after doing 17 years, I began speaking with law enforcement and okay. school administrators and letting them know about my story okay. and letting them know about how I believe we can stop these tragedies from happening. And I began working at that homeless shelter because I wanted to help do some good for the community I once hurt. Okay. I can't take back what I've done. I can't make direct amends to the teacher that I injured that day or to the students who I traumatized that day. I can't do anything to help them. So what do I do? I try to do something good for others. And if you believe I deserve this, so be it. Okay. I don't want people to feel sorry for me. I don't want people. I don't know, man. This video, the tone of this video is interesting. I, 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 don't, I don't know. So it, the tone feels like he wants you to feel sorry for him. Um, or rather, the tone feels like he's... And I'm not saying this is what it is, but it feels like he's trying to cry for the camera. Um, you know? But it doesn't mean that he's not genuine. Maybe he feels like he has to have that response or people won't think he's genuine enough. I don't really know, but it feels weird. Um I think I want to believe him though, you know, like it's, and it makes sense. He, he went from being a school shooter and then he started working at like a homeless thing and maybe he is trying to give back and he works at the FBI and it's like, there probably are things about his story, uh, that could have a positive impact in the way that police deal with stuff, stuff like this, you know, <clears throat> to forgive me to think that I'm a good guy. I don't care about any of that. Okay. What I want is for change. I got to see more. I don't want to make what I want judgment. is for people to realize that 
if we take mental health more seriously, that is just one step of many that can make drastic changes around the board. Not only stopping these tragedies that we see too often, but also stopping the suicide that we see among adolescents and children, let alone full-grown adults, let alone our veterans who don't get taken care of. Okay. I mean, it's true. It's just interesting to bring that up, but okay. We need change. And if I can be a part of that, so be it. Because obviously... I, Nothing has changed in the past 30 years for mental health. Uh, kind of. Nobody's sure. really pushing forward in schools as much as it should be. We've okay. seen students... This can be very difficult to be effective when it comes to mental health in schools, though, because you need to... Uh, if more than anything, you have to deal with the parents, because if your kid has a mental health issue, you're going to need to be a part of the healing, because you could also be part of the problem in the first place. We've survived <clears throat> school shootings, cry out for help time and time again, and lawmakers ignore them. True. So here I am, the bad guy, the one who walked into a school with a gun, telling you, you need to change things. All right, relax. Maybe I'm just not good with crying. Okay, interesting. Um, That's that. There's a whole news article on the guy where it just seems to recount what he had said, so I'm not really going to read that um what is this before i started to do public speaking and social media i weighed out will i be helping or hurting more and for a long time i believed that i would be just hurting people more and i had people reaching out to me and saying no i believe that you can help more uh, unfortunately we've seen so many people so many survivors speak out and get ignored giving your perspective which is rare yeah i mean i think that there can be an uncomfortable value in listening to people who have done horrific things in the past uh recount their experiences with it and what the motivators are i think it's very rare for people who i think it's very rare that like literal like sociopaths commit crimes it seems like a lot of people um or maybe it seems like a lot of people do them because of some kind of uh, life conditioning, some kind of weird area you go into in life. So it's it's not bad to hear people like this talk. You know, I remember listening to drunk drivers talk at like a drunk driving you know event at schools and stuff, um, and talk about how bad that is. And obviously, it's not as bad as bringing a weapon into school, but um, <clears throat> you know, can help us understand what's going on and how to stop it. Um, I see a lot of the pain that people have because of me, and I've always been aware of that pain. And I'm, I'm taking some time to reflect and to think about, I still wanna help. Uh, I used to do a lot more behind the scenes before I started going public. And whether you believe me or not, I really do want to do good. I really do want to help people. I think I could believe that, I mean, and I have no reason not to believe he wants to do good. It's just that there's like a performative energy around him. And I feel like he fe I feel like he feels like he has to be um, borderline crying. And so he's putting on this weird act instead of speaking genuinely. You know, I, I hope that I can do that in one way or another, whether it's publicly or behind closed doors. So. OK, um, interesting. What's this? At an FBI conference with over 200 agents. I don't know why I keep saying, what is this? I fucking found all this stuff to talk about. I just spoke at an FBI conference with over 200 agents from all around the country. Okay. And means, man. I'm not proud of my past, but I've always been open about it because I want to share whispering. my experiences and the mindset that I had as a disturbed 16-year-old kid um, in hopes that other people can make changes to prevent future shootings, to prevent future tragedies. And here I am talking with the people who are on the front lines, uh, not just responding after a tragedy, but they're also out there talking with individuals and they're trying to prevent people who may be on that path of doing something horrible. So I was able to talk okay, a lot also fair. about, you know, what would have worked maybe with me at 16? What are some words and phrases that you should really stay away from when you're talking to somebody, when you're trying to get them to open up? 
and what are the best ways to get somebody to open up and i'll make more videos uh, as i always have with you guys and sharing that stuff but it feels so good to to be a positive force and to, to make a difference for for good it, it, Papaga, do you think that the performative, the performative nature uh, is a byproduct of him being reintegrated into society after prison, plus his feelings about what he did? It's possible. I mean, what, if it sounds like what you're telling me is that prison uh, is a very different world, and maybe he's adjusting with his re-acclimation. Uh, maybe. It's possible. Uh, to me, to where I go, to me, I think that it's a public speaking thing. I feel like he's trying to overcompensate because he's like a public speaker. That's what he does. Uh, and he's trying to convey empathy. And so he sensationalizes some aspects of it to like really get through to people uh, as to how bad what he did. That's where I go because he's a professional public speaker. Uh, I feel like if he didn't give a shit about what he did, he wouldn't be doing public speaking. That's just my opinion. Um, okay. Then we have some more stuff. What is this? Have I spoken to any of my old classmates? Probably not, because you fucking whisper all the time, dude. Speak up, man. Come on. Well, for those who don't know, I am a school shooter. I did 17 years in prison, and I have videos about it. I have a lot of videos where I try to address this issue so we can prevent other you shootings. Watch that video? And I work with law enforcement about that also. Okay. Um, but yes, uh, so I had friends of mine who actually kept in touch with me while I was in prison, who visited me. And I had a lot of old classmates who I wasn't even friends with reach out to me oh, yeah, uh, since I came home. And especially since I've been on social media, um, there's been a lot of support. There's actually classmates and their family who are in the comments section of my video. Sorry, I'm listening. I just want he's the pinned comments don't show up on the computer. They only show up on there. And we watched one of the pinned comments. So you just don't realize it. Hmm. There's also that's interesting classmates who I wasn't even friends with reach out to me uh, since I came home and especially since I've been on social media um, there's been a lot of support that's interesting I wouldn't doubt it that's what a complicating complicated thing you know there's actually classmates and their family who are in the comments section of my video you just don't realize it there's also those <laughs> who've reached out to me to share with me the trauma that they endured at my hands the, the Jesus pain Christ. the suffering the anguish that they still feel to this day and I'm open to it. I want to be... That's got to be scary, man. That's fucking terrifying. ...be helpful however I can. And if that includes people reaching out and, and sharing that pain, then by all means, I'm very open to it. Um, and, and I'm also speaking at my hometown. There's a public forum where I've been invited to share my story and to answer questions to hopefully provide help for parents, teachers, and law enforcement Um as well as people who can maybe get some type of closure from what I've done to them. Okay, interesting. Uh, is that? I think that's pretty much everything we got from him. Pain and suffering, especially in my hometown. Yet I've this been is just him talking about how he's speaking to somebody. Invited to go into my hometown and to speak about what led me down the dark path to commit the shooting that I did in my high school. Okay. Most importantly, <clears throat> I'll be talking about how we can prevent others from doing the same. And I know that everybody in that audience is going to be people who have suffered because of me. And I hope on some level I can offer them also some answers and some healing. But we'll see. Okay. It seems like a lot of his platform is being like a public speaker for this. Um, Hide numbers. To those. Too many shootings. Okay, this is a 27 minute video of him whispering about how he did it. I'm sorry, about how he was a school shooter. My name is John Romano. Why are you whispering, brother? Do we want to watch this 20? I mean, I'm kind of curious, but at the same time, I don't know. Watched this. <clears throat> Let me see this. The story he is telling y'all is not what happened. Says, okay. I just wanted to be taken out by the police. That he went into school, fired a few rounds into the ceiling. Assistant principal attacks him. The firearm goes off. He's arrested. Now, what really okay. happened, went into the bathroom to text his friends. Hey, I have a weapon. Leave now. Okay, Goes so in the hallway. Is firing at students. They're running back and forth. Chasing students into classrooms. He's a bad shot. How do we know that? Uh, they're being pointed at. Hits one student in the leg. He goes back into the hallway. 
What is she referencing? Assistant principal attacks him. He fires at the principal. They're also hit. He gets arrested in that night in the jail cell. The TV's playing the news of what happened and what he did. The CEO's report, he was laughing at it, giggling at the screen. Mind you, quarter of a million what is she referencing? Followers. Oh, his comments. Oh, everybody has a rough patch. I'm sorry. That's not a rough patch. Then this happened recently where he was attacked by a sword. And he claims it's because he's white. On the news, they not. Maybe I don't care about that. I mean, that sucks, but. Once bring up his crimes. Says that he's gracious and compassionate. He does so much for the unhoused community. That man is. I mean, he might. He's a top tier manipulator. You hear stories all the time of people in prison say the nicest people. You look up the record comes to find out they've committed the most heinous crimes you can think of. They're constantly trying to manipulate everyone around them. But what is she referencing though? I mean, I'm open to it, but they have not changed. What, what is she? What is she? What like I have? Maybe she's right. What are you referencing? You can't just make a bunch of claims. What is it that she's referencing? Um, because I wouldn't doubt any of that, but I need to see what actually had happened. Um, I mean, there's this this here. I don't know if this is accurate. On February uh, 9th, 20, 2004, 16 year old John Romano Carrot. This isn't even like reputable. It's a fucking book. I mean, what am I supposed to do about this? Uh, carried his brand new shotgun inside of a black case onto the Columbia High School in whatever. High school. He walked in the main office, up the stairs, bathroom. He sat there for 20 minutes thinking. When a student entered the bathroom, John forced him back out at gunpoint. Then John fired at two students in the hallway taking the basketball cap off of one of them and sent everyone within earshot of panic. He moved down the hall, peering into his classrooms, leveling the gun at other students and teachers. An assistant principal grabbed him from behind. Before he was subdued, John was able to get up one more round, and he wounded a teacher. The incident took only a few minutes to play inside, like most school shootings produce effective. Okay. Uh, it's just like, it's such a bizarre... I spent a year interviewing everyone in the case in school and the community. Interesting. Uh, so there's a whole book about him. Wow. What the general public saw, however, were only a few front page articles about it. The shooting itself, a follow up story, and some of the students who weren't very close to the action. John Mills are, are school safe enough? Article, a hero story, but John, please work on I don't know, man. I mean, this doesn't necessarily communicate to me that what she's saying is correct. I feel like there's it's so up in the air. Uh, if anybody has something they could show me, I'm open to it. I wouldn't doubt that the way that her, she told her story is true. Um, but I would need to know what she's referencing because she's just, she's just asserting something. I need more than what she's actually saying. Um, and people can be racist against a white person. Yeah, they can. I have no interest in engaging in that performative bullshit. Like, it's not productive conversation about race issues. Uh, she had a conversation with him. Oh no, I am a school shooter. I did okay. 17 years in prison, and I have videos about it. All right, Karen's court. This is our live tonight. So if you see that, okay, you're gonna do a Karen's court. So fucking weird and dumb performance. How did the I attack only, him? The only thing... A 16-year-old student opened fire at his high school on Monday morning with a pump-action shotgun, shooting a teacher in the leg and spreading fear amongst thousands. Student fired at least two shells before he was tackled by the assistant principal in Columbia High School in Columbia. He was arrested at the school shortly afterwards and was charged with one count of attempted murder to the district attorney of... Okay, interesting. That doesn't necessarily communicate he was trying to shoot somebody intentionally. or like He might have still shot at the ceiling. We don't know. That's the thing. Um, the shot the cap off one of them means that he wasn't shooting the ceiling possibly it means a shotgun I don't know interesting okay different about you John is that you didn't kill anybody because you were a poor shot thank goodness because I was a you poor shot a I shot into the ceiling what are you talking about thank goodness that you were a poor shot that's the only reason why and you are giving grace on this app for no reason you're not advocating you're not putting out information about how to truly you haven't talked to really talked in to any advocacy groups well doesn't he talk to the fbi i'm confused about this one you said it yourself what? No, you haven't started anything what <clears throat> i'm confused you are strictly on this app benefiting off the fact that you went to jail for to prison for 17 years for being a school shooter 
you were attacked and when you were released two years later attacked and since then you have been promoting the the attack and not really talking about the <clears throat> issue the core issue and how you get to benefit what on tiktok for just simply doing for 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 a behavior so we know that that was it like how did i talk for just simply do so we know that this man is getting all right sorry there's an audio in this i can't i'm not going to that tell me why do you got my picture showing on there you're because trying to get views and belong. likes off of me oh, and my tragedy all... well that is true she is trying to do that so you're better off not responding to her that i committed I so you are disrespecting you. not only me for the for what i went through you're disrespecting my victims because you're not interested oh my God, in bettering you things about the you're on here he really shouldn't have come onto this live because he sounds like a fucking idiot she's also a fucking idiot but bullshitting <laughs> with people so you care about the night. You care about the victims of I'm I'm somehow hurting the victims of your school shooting while you're sitting on this app trying to garner sympathy because you were attacked by swords and I'm the problem, John. Yeah, you are part of the problem because a lot of people who are on here, they're pretty much instigating and creating hate and fueling that anger among people. You are a part of the problem. If you go through a lot of my stuff, I'm talking about positivity. And although I might talk about the man who attacked me, I talk <clears> about <throat> forgiving him. I talk about how I hope he has a better I life. How you I talk about how I fought so he didn't though. end up. Why? Did you know? Did you know? This was never going to be a productive conversation. She's just there to like do the best that she can to make him look as bad as possible. What is how you called the victims of the school shooting your victims how you how well yeah they're the victims of him and he's acknowledging that are you how you made sure to identify them as yours you own that you own what the fuck is she talking this is why you can't engage she doesn't care about what's being talked about here like let's just be explicitly clear she has no interest in what actually happened and that's a weird thing to say oh you're calling your victims because you own them you're like proud of it is what she's trying to say no that's not what it is it's because he was the one that created that victim he is the victim maker i don't think that he's trying to own the victim and uh, grab some kind of uh, agency onto that or something he, she's being so stupid she's a fucking idiot mine mine my victims so you get to control what? how everybody else identifies with what you did what the fuck are you talking she's stupid do you know the 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 ridiculousness? What are you talking about? Now? Because if I didn't call them my victims, then people would be saying, "Hey, you need to own up to it. You need to see that these are your victims." No, no, no. You could have simply said the victims. Or you could just say that this, this is like such a semantical argument. No, because so that's the thing. I, it, it is. I, I, I always have people on one side or the other, no matter what I say, get upset. So I own up to it. They are my victims because they're the victims of my actions. That's why I say it. Not because I want to control them, but because I'm owning up to what I did. Why are you talking about me? Why do you got my... All right. Nothing super productive out of this. I'm kind of curious to talk. I kind of want to talk to this guy. I think I might reach out to him. Yeah, listen, here's my thing. After the, we watch this entire segment, um, we have... This person named John Romano, who, when he was 17 years old, or 16 years old, I, I believe, uh, sh attempted to shoot up a school. He went in. The details are unclear. He fired off multiple rounds. Uh, he ended up injuring at least one teacher. Thankfully, nobody had died. And then he spent 17 years in prison. He came out. Um, it seems like he tried to turn his life around. He... Worked at a homeless shelter. He got attacked with swords. It's a whole complicated thing. And now he seems to spend a lot of time you know, hanging out or going to FBI things and speaking about his experience and trying to have an impact of like, hey, what I did was really bad and do, you know, like school events uh, or going out and doing some kind of advocacy in some capacity. And I, I get it. For me, the way that he talks about his story can come off a little dishonest sometimes something a little bit ingenuine. I don't know if it's because he's being disingenuous or it's also quite possible that he's just not a great public speaker or maybe he feels uncomfortable when he talks. I don't know. Or maybe he just doesn't resonate with me. But what I do know is that generally speaking, uh, as a progressive, which a lot of people who are criticizing this guy about, something to understand is that you're supposed to put your feelings aside sometimes for the benefit of general general advocacy or... You're supposed okay. As a progressive, which a lot of people are who are criticizing him, we understand 
that prison reform is supposed to be very important. The goal of the prison reform is two things. Get somebody off the street that's dangerous and then to rehabilitate them so they can get back into society. And it's interesting that a lot of the people that are going after this guy are left-leaning and they don't seem to understand that point. I know some people are upset because some of the details are a little hazy. I haven't been able to find... Some people have been alleging that the details are much different than what he he says. It could be true. I haven't been able to find it. Um, But ultimately, it is frustrating that you are seeing content creators who claim to be left-leaning and progressive showing their ass, honestly, who are now all of a sudden throwing that concept of prison reform and, and, uh, you know, prisoner reform all of a sudden for whatever reason. I don't really know why. 